Did you know that after the title of a scientific paper, the abstract is the most read section? Accordingly, the abstract should be carefully crafted to not only provide a concise summary of your work, but should also entice the reader to download and read your paper. Many abstracts are written as a single paragraph with no prescribed structure, as seen here, but some journals ask for an abstract that follows a preset format like this. Hi, I'm Karen McKee, and in this video, I'm going to dissect the structured abstract and show you how to concisely summarize a paper using an example from the literature. And if you stick around until the end, I'll explain what those strange tree structures are that I'm standing behind in this photo. But first, let's talk about writing a structured abstract. An abstract should reflect all the parts of your paper, but in shortened form. And that's what structured abstracts do. They include the key components that should go into an abstract. And each component has a heading. The aim of the study, the methods, the results, and the conclusions or significance of the work. Some journals require other information, such as location of the study or species studied. Let's look at each component using an example from the literature. In this study, we examined how production of ball cypress swamps varied with latitude. The journal had a required template for the structure of the abstract, which we followed. If your journal does not offer a structured format, this formula will help you write your abstract. First, the aim of the study or problem addressed. Here, you identify the problem you tackled and put it into a broader perspective. In our example, we began by putting our work into the broader topic of global warming and forest vegetation change. We then pointed out the lack of information about environmental controls own ecosystem functions, such as production, especially for forested wetlands that may be important for carbon storage. With that brief opening, we told the reader what broader issue our work involved and what information gap we addressed. There are many ways to write this opening, depending on your study objectives. You can provide a, a brief background of the topic, the motivation behind the study, or the specific question or hypothesis you addressed. It might require only a sentence or two, or it may take a longer description. The next section required by our journal was the study location. We described both the subject of our study and location, bald cypress swamps in the southeastern United States. That statement orients the reader and also gets across the idea that our study covered a large geographic area, which was an important distinction for the journal we submitted our manuscript to. Your target journal may not require location or species information, but you may want to include it if relevant because it adds key words, making your paper more discoverable by search engines. The next section describes the methods. Here you want to give an overview of your approach. Was it a laboratory or a field study? What experimental treatments were applied? In our study, we used published data on ball cypress production along a latitudinal gradient. We used those data to identify patterns and predict potential response of the forest to changes in climate. The next section provides the main findings that directly relate to the central problem or questions addressed. We describe patterns in the production data and what they suggested about controls on the distribution and production of ball cypress swamps. We also acknowledged alternative explanations for observed patterns such as dispersal, competition, and other environmental conditions. Depending on the journal, you can provide data in the results section of an abstract, as we did, to emphasize the key findings. The final segment should tell what you concluded based on your findings. In our abstract, we listed four conclusions that our findings indicated. 
You might point out what's new or surprising about your results or practical applications of your work. And here is the final version in our published paper. Many journals have a word limit for abstracts, including structured abstracts. So focus on your most important findings and be as concise as possible. If your target journal doesn't require a structured abstract, you can still use this formula of aim, methods, results, and conclusions as a guide. Now for the information I promised. The large structures in the photo are bald cypress knees, which can vary in height, density, and shape. At this location in Louisiana, these are some of the biggest knees found anywhere. They can also grow into unusual shapes, as this specimen in Florida. Botanists have been debating since the early 1800s about the function of cypress knees. Mechanical support, root, root aeration, carbon storage, and nutrient accumulation are the main hypotheses often cited. The aeration theory is the most popular and is often presented as the explanation in some textbooks. However, none of these explanations is universally accepted. Whatever the reason for cypress knees, it's one of the mysteries in nature that we scientists love to investigate. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos that may help you get your paper published.